Hello and welcome to this session. In the, today we are looking at anatomy of the body, yeah, introduction. And we have six learning outcomes. Number one, we need to define anatomy and physiology. Number three, we'll state the divisions of human anatomy. Number three, we need to identify the human regions. Number four, describe the hierarchical organization of the human body. Identify the organ systems and stating the function of each. And lastly, we need to remind ourselves why we as nurses, we need to study human anatomy. Welcome. So in definition of human anatomy, we're saying that anatomy and physiology are two of the most basic terms and are areas of study in life sciences. So human anatomy comes from two words. We have anat and tomy. So anat is up, it denotes up, okay? And tom means to cut. So it's often um, loosely defined as the study of structures in the human body. So anatomy focuses on the structures, on the description of form, or how structures at different levels look. So we can generally define anatomy as uh, that we say that anatomy refers to the internal and external structures of the body and their physical relationship. What about physiology? We're saying that physiology um, comes also from two terms. We have physio, which means nature, and logos, uh, what we already know in biology. Logos means study. So uh, physiology, we say that it studies the nature of the human body. Uh, nature in the sense that how these uh, structures work at different levels. So we can say that physiology refers to the study of function of those structures, whereas anatomy looks at the description of the form and how these structures look. Physiology looks at how these structures function. Okay? Thank you. Moving to the second objective, stating the divisions and the branches of human anatomy. We are saying that anatomy, human anatomy has several branches. One of it is gross anatomy. We have gross anatomy. We have microscopic anatomy, um, cell biology, surface anatomy, radiological anatomy, developmental anatomy, or embryology, and so on and so forth. So the main branch here that we normally use to study is the gross anatomy. So we're saying that uh, gross anatomy will look at its systemic or region-wise studying of the human body. So we can study in terms of systems or we can study in terms of region, okay? So gross anatomy encompasses cadaveric uh, anatomy and osteology. So looking at cadavers, will also be involved here, that the study of the structure of the human body just as seen with unmagnified eyes is what we are referring to as gross anatomy. We are using unmagnified eyes. It's good to remember that uh, spectacles, yeah, some of you have spectacles I can see. Those ones are considered naked eyes because they don't magnify an object beyond the normal human uh, magnification, okay? Yes, so gross anatomy can be um, studied through uh, two approaches. We have topographic approach or systemic approach. When you talk of the topographic approach, this one involves studying anatomy according to the human region, so that we say the head, uh, the neck, uh, the thorax, yeah, abdomen, the leg, ETC, you know, you get it, right? But when you talk about in systems, you're saying this is where the body uh, structure is studied according to the various 12 body systems, okay? So, okay, digestive system, cardiovascular system, circulatory system, lymphatic system, excretory system, you know? So, when you compare the two, uh, topographic approach and systemic approach, you find that topographic approach is very detailed compared to systemic approach, yes? So depending on the specialty that we do, 
you you'll find like uh, the medical officers will be concentrating so much on the topographic anatomy because they really want to know exactly where organ A and organ B, their relationship, H and every detail about the organ. Okay. For our case as nurses, we are going to use a hybrid approach where we are going to incorporate aspects of both topographic and systemic approach to have a better understanding of human, human anatomy, okay? So in identifying the regions, we are saying that the regions of the body include the head, the neck, the torso, upper extremities, and lower extremities. So the body is also divided by three imaginary planes known as the sagittal plane, yeah, the coronal plane, and the transverse plane. So the sagittal plane runs vertically and divides the body into right and left portion, okay? Sagittal plane, okay? Sagittal plane, yeah? Right and left. Coronal plane, we have anterior or front and half uh, back portions. And finally, the transverse planes runs horizontally and separates the body into a top and a bottom, a bottom half, okay? So what are these anatomical regions of the human body? We are saying that the head region, we're looking at the frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, auricular, otic, o -o orbital, infraorbital, buccal, parotid, zygomatic, nasal, oral, mental regions. Mention them. All these will be studied under the head regions. What about the neck regions? In the head re neck regions, we'll be talking of things like submandibular, submental, carotid, muscular, uh, lesser supraventricular, occipital, homoclavicular, suboccipital, triangles, and regions, and that will be involved in the neck, in the neck region. In the trunk, we have the posterior and the anterior regions. When you talk of the posterior trunk regions, we'll be talking of things like the deltoid, the supra, uh, suprascapular, interscapular, scapular, infrascapular, vertebral, lumbar, sacral, gluteal, and anal regions. But for the anterior trunk regions, we'll be having the thorax and the abdomen. We'll be talking of things like pristanol, per, 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 Spectral, uh, in, uh, in, inflammatory, uh, hypo, hypochondriac, epigastric, lumbar, inguinal, umbilical, and pubic regions. What about the upper limbs? Yeah, the upper limbs, you're saying we'll be talking of the arm, forearm, hand. Uh, it's high time that, guys, you should know that this one you're going to be using, you're referring to it as the hand. This one, the forearm, yeah, the forearm, the forearm. And then the, the arm. And then the lower regions, we'll be looking at the, the, the gluteal regions, yeah, the thigh region, and lastly, the foot, okay, the foot. So these are the different anatomical regions that we are going to be looking at. Our objective number next was about the hierarchical organization of the human body. And you're saying that for human, the levels of organization are organized as follows. We have atoms that make molecules, molecules mo make organelles, organelles make cells. So atoms, uh, we're saying that all living and non-living organisms are composed of one or more unique substances called elements. And these are the smallest uh, unit of, in which is an atom, okay? So the smallest unit of that is an atom. For example, the element oxygen, is composed of two atoms. We have O2, two atoms. So when atoms combine, they form molecules. So, so atoms combine to form a molecule, okay? To form a molecule, like a water molecule, H2O, with the two hydrogens and one oxygen. Two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. You know, they combine to form water molecule. So um, we're saying that when you move from molecules, you go to organelles. And you're saying that there are several organelles with each a specific function, OK? So guys, can I give you a minute to name for me just 10 organelles? Yes? Correct. 
mitochondria, correct, centrioles, correct, cell membrane, correct, nucleus, nucleolus, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, okay? Great, guys. The good thing I've realized from most of you, you're mentioning mitochondria. It happens to everyone. I don't know why. But mitochondria, this sites for respiration, right? Where they supply energy to cells. No wonder most of us are looking at it. So you're saying that different cell types have different amounts and types of organelles depending on their function. Okay, so some like muscle cells use a lot of energy. You expect to find a lot of mitochondria there. Whereas the skin, you might find you have less mitochondria. So several organelles, we're saying they form cells. And we're saying all living structures are made up of cells. For example, the muscle cells contract and move. Red blood cells, they carry oxygen. Okay, so all cells are composed of a cell membrane. This is a thin outer layer that surrounds the jelly-like extracellular fluid that contains small organ-like cells called organelles. So organelles make the cells. Several cells are going to make the tissues. And the tissues you're saying we have four major um, tissues. We have the muscle tissue, have the nerve tissue, have the epithelial and the connective. We are going to organize lectures for these different types of tissues where we'll be able to discuss them in detail. Several tissues will make organs and organs are identifiable structure of the body that make up of two or more types of uh, tissues. Organs can often perform certain physiological functionings like the stomach helps digest food, the heart helps pump blood and the brain and the kidneys. Several mention all the organs. The lungs helps in breathing, and so on and so forth. So several organs are going to form organ systems, okay? So an organ system is a group of organs that work together to perform a particular function. For example, we have the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine. They work together to digest food and get nutrients into the body and eliminate waste, okay? And they all form what? The digestive system. We can mention a number of organs that form different systems, okay? So lastly is the most complex, the most complex level of tissue and human organization. And that is the organism, right? So the human organism is made up of many organ systems that work together to perform human functions, okay? Great. So we have the number of different systems. We have the digestive system, Okay, sorry, the digestive system, the respiratory system, circulatory system, immune and lymphatic system, excretory and urinary system, endocrine system, nervous system, reproductive system, muscular system, skeletal system, and lastly, the integumentary system. So in total, we have 12 body systems. And all these 12 body systems all have roles to play that we'll be able to look at them in details as we discuss one by, by one. Remember, Father, guys, we need to understand some basic terminologies. Terminologies like cell structure. We're saying that this one will be focusing on the overall structure of the cell as well as the structure and roles of various organelles. So in this case, we'll be able to review a number of organelles giving out their their functions we'll also need to know the cellular adaptations remember when cells are subjected to a stress or an injurious agent they have to mutate change so as to absorb some of these harsh conditions so here we'll be focusing on the various structural adaptation of cells to various functions okay we could also be having a response to stresses like things like atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, and so on, okay? Next, we'll also be getting a term like cellular genetics, and this one refers to the basic levels of organization of the nuclear DNA. We'll be looking at chromosomes. Remember, we have the 46 chromosomes or the 23 pairs of chromosomes. We'll be able to revisit them and even understand 
uh, better. Lastly, we have the cell divisions, and I know we have already covered this in high school. Remember the phases of cell cycle? We'll also remind ourselves about mitosis, meiosis, yes, and the two processes and how they affect cell, cell division. So these are the different types of tissues that we'll be able to look at. The other branch of anatomy that we really need to understand is developmental anatomy and embryology. And in this category, we'll also be looking at how malformations normally occur, congenital abnormalities, right? How are they inherited and what happens, okay? So embryology focuses on prenatal development of an organism, particularly during the embryonic phase of the prenatal um, development, okay? The first eight weeks, right? And the developmental anatomy will look at the physio physiological morphology and the changes involved in the organism's life, the development of different organs. How do the hands develop? How does the heart de develop? When is the kidney developed? When are the lungs able to help in gaseous exchange, okay? When, is the, when does the heart start pumping blood? We'll be looking at these uh, morphological, physiological morphologies, okay? So lastly, we need to discuss about how, why it's important for us to study human anatomy as nurses, okay? So has somebody ever asked you why, why you think it's important for us to study human anatomy as nurses, yeah? It's quite important because we'll be able to need to know how to identify the different anatomical region, okay? Like the buttocks, the shoulder, you know? Like for the injections in the deltoid region, Okay, the deltoid muscle, yeah, identifying the acromion process and going two centimeters below the acromion process before you give the injections. We have to learn anatomy for us to understand. Also, number two is that an, uh, studying anatomy will help us perform the physical examination so that the physical examination will be told you do a head to toe examination so the head to toe you be doing it as you look at the different anatomical regions starting with the head the neck the trunk you know the lower limb and the upper limbs okay so that will be very important for us to know also uh, learning anatomy will also help us understand how treatment works because we have already know the basic uh, physiology of different cells. So which, uh, how will drugs be potentiating uh, the activities of the cells to bring about the desired uh, uh, outcome okay, for each patient, okay? So we'll be able to appreciate the treatment for our case. We'll be able to also help us in documenting exactly where was the procedure done, uh, where is the, 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 the treatment given, and exactly indicating in our records using the anatomical region. So, guys, it is very, very important for us to study human anatomy, okay? Other importance will be coming up in the due course to help us understand exactly why it is very important for us to study human anatomy anatomy okay so welcome to this course guys this is just our first session yeah remember we are going to have another session on the same introduction where we'll be looking at the anatomical terms thank you so much and have a nice time